I've been walking in my sleep, counting troubles instead of counting sheep. Where the years went, I can't say. I just turned around and they've gone away. And I've been sifting through the layers of dusty books and faded papers tell a story I used to know it's one that happened so long ago it's gone away and yesterday now I find myself on the mountainside Where the rivers change direction Across the great divide Now I heard the owl calling Softly as the night was falling with a question I replied But he's gone Across that borderline He's gone away Yesterday Now I find myself On a mountainside Where the rivers change direction Across the great divide Finest hour I have seen is the one comes between the edge of night, break of day, when the darkness, when it rolls away, it's gone away. It's gone away. Yesterday, yesterday, now I find myself on the mountainside where the rivers change direction across the great divide. It's gone away, it's gone away. Yesterday, yesterday, now I find myself. On the mountainside Where the rivers change direction Across the great divide Reading books, I like drinking tea. The smell of fresh baked bread with thyme and rosemary. And I like Netflix 
I like movies My lazy boy recliner And my big flat screen TV But I love you I like to travel Someday I'll take a train Across this country From Washington to Maine And I like to drive to the beach And walk on the sand Humming some familiar tune From a rock and roll band But I Cause you are what makes this life so great, even better than chocolate cake. No way. I like hot sauce. I like spicy food. Go in the concerts and get in a tattoo. Come on. And I like the music. I like guitars. I like my Star Wars. But you have my heart. And I Thank you so much. We appreciate it. You're very nice. They are, aren't Thank they? Thank you. They are. We've lucky in the last week. We've had some very nice audiences, haven't we? Well, I, I guess you could throw things at a tent. In a <laughs> tent. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm going to try and talk a little less than I normally do because we have a very short time here. So this is another new song. Has anybody ever been to Ireland? Yes. Good, 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 good. This is a sequel to a song I wrote a long time ago called Dreaming of Ireland. And uh, that was written before I went to Ireland. And this was written after I went to Ireland. Last night I dreamed of Ireland It been such a long, long while I was running through the Wicklow Hills I was laughing like a child The sky a purple hue And the air so sweet and mild I woke up from my dream and I couldn't help but smile 
It's been ten long years since we left that emerald isle. A wedding, a honeymoon, the trip of a lifetime. What I wouldn't give to be back there by your side. In your love. In your love. fire and toast and tea stroll in the paths of St. Stephen's Green and browsing the shops down on Grafton Street looking for bookstores music and some food a good brown bread with an Irish soup. The Dingle Town is a magic place. The Connor Pass lives outside time and space. Driving the pass in a rare bit of snow. The ancients spoke to us, and we put on quite a show. In Ireland, in Ireland, dear old Ireland, walking on the banks of the river boy. Make a wish, toss in a coin. Later on, back at the B and B, a turf fire and toast and tea. I don't know if we'll ever get back But I'd like to think we will I left there a piece of my heart And it lives there still Ireland, In Ireland, dear old Ireland, walking on the banks of the river boy, we make a wish, toss in a Sleep with our Irish dreams, and in the morning there'll be toast and tea.
Thank you. Thank you so much. an awkward kid I never was good at sports always chosen last when choosing sides I had a few close friends and I guess I did all right but the other kids weren't always so kind but Saturday was like a holiday for a weird kid like me I walked to 7-Eleven My little slice of heaven For a comic book and a Slurpee When I would get back home, I'd go straight to my room, to his room with my dog, and I'd lock my door. I'd listen to records play, records play, draw cartoons all day, and read those comic books on the bedroom floor. But Saturday is a nerd's holiday. The Saturday morning cartoons. I'm walking to the 7 Eleven for this side of heaven for a Slurpee with a combination straw spoon. Straw spoon. Hmm. Is it a straw? Or is it a spoon? It's a spoon. Some kids, they played football, other kids rode bikes, but me, all I ever wanted to do was draw. Superhero comic books, that was my escape to big fantastical new worlds. Now Saturday is still my holiday. Though I'm a bit older, a bit gray. Now I drink cups of tea, read those books electronically, but I reminisce those days of comic books and slurpee. so much we're going to sing you one last song you know that was an appropriate song to do today is 7-eleven and if you go to 7-eleven you get a free slurpee today today only just 10 what tomorrow oh <laughs> <laughs> boo oh well but i gave you the head start for the morrow that's Yay! right <laughs> front loading we're front loading you we're going to sing y'all one last song. Uh, please make them feel appreciated, my friends. This is Margaret Wolf. And this is Mr. Doug Poplin. So we're going to leave you with this old Irish tune. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the music today, uh, we have CDs upstairs up in the lobby. Take some music home with you. Christmas. Hanukkah, it's always coming. <laughs> Sign up on the mailing list. Thank you, Margaret, so you can come see us again and enjoy the program. 
we met the actor backstage. You're in for a treat. A hungry feeling came on me a stealing and the mice were squealing in my prison cell and the Oh, triangle, when jingle, jangle, all along the banks of the Royal Canal. To begin the morning, the ward in a ballad, get up. Bowsy and clean out your cell and the old triangle when jingle jangle all along the banks of the Royal Canal and a screw was peeping the like a sleeping as I lay there dreaming of my good girl Sal and the all triangle went jingle jangle all along the banks of the Royal And one fine spring evening, as I lay there dreaming, and the seagulls are wheeling high above the prison wall, and the all triangle went jingle, jangle, all along the banks of the And the wind was sighing as the day was dying, and I lay there crying in my prison cell. And the all triangle went jingle, jangle, all along the banks of the Royal And up in the female prison, there's 75 women, and I wish I was with them, that I did dwell, and the all triangle went jingle, bloody jingle. All along the banks of the Royal Canal. All along the banks of the Royal Canal. Thank you, good night. You'll forgive me if I'm looking for someone who had a gift for capturing timeless moments to let the rest of us come out of time. Will there be another Ansel Adams, American original, sculptor of shadow and light? Will another have the patience to await the perfect moment when the elements and angles are just right. Ansel Adams was no hero, 
cursed with pride and foible, but like any Einstein you find, take everything you can. Seraphim of film and format, a wizard of the lands, freezing magic in a frame of stone and sand. And in a range of light, a gentleman revealed his heart, showed us treasures God in plain sight hid. And in a sacred setting, shutter clicking on the wind, let us see like Ansel Adams did. A moment is so precious in our hurry rush rush lives seems the only way to save it is hang it over the tv and our modern generation focused on the destination is it still a thing of beauty if we move too fast to see and in a range of light a gentleman revealed his heart showed us treasures God in plain sight hid and in a sacred setting shutter clicking on the wind let us see like Ansel Adams did Now I'm a man who chases shadows. I've been known to talk to ghosts and I strain to hear echoes of the past. His reflections in still waters, spires soar into the sky, all remind me that this heartbreak will not last. And in a range of light, a gentleman revealed his heart, showed us treasures God in plain sight hid. And in a sacred setting, shutter clicking on the wind, let us see like Ansel Adams did. There be another Ansel Adams, American original, sculptor of shadow and light. Thank you. Thank you. I've lost track of how many Chautauquas I've been to. It's been a lot. Since last year, I have been working on a project, an album and a book inspired by my family history, which is just too crazy to kind of even wrap my head around, let alone tell you about in 30 seconds. Suffice it to say that I've had this amazing journey through a whole lot of different places and meeting a whole lot of different people who turned out to be family along the way. One of them uh, was my three times great grandfather who, like many of us these days, I met online, rentagrandpa.com. And the weirdest thing was when, uh, when I Googled his name, his picture came up. And I hadn't gotten his name right up until that point because he's got kind of a funny first name. His name is Artis, Artis Culver. And when I was nine, writing out everything that my grandmother had given us of our family history, my handwriting was terrible, and it was a weird name anyway. So when I finally got it right, there's his picture staring at me off of the Connecticut Public Radio website. Where else would you find your great-great-great-grandfather, right? And it turns out that he was part of a story they'd done just six months earlier about this exhibition of photographs of the state Civil War veterans who had been imprisoned at Andersonville. That was my introduction to Artis Culver. 
The next thing I found out was that after being in the Union Army for all of four weeks, he wound up in the most pivotal moments on the field, not 25, 30 miles from here at Antietam. <clears throat> Artist Culver deserved a whole lot better than what he got, and he certainly deserved a song, so I figured if I'm the songwriter in the family, it's probably on me to do it. Artist Culver. My name is Artis Culver, in summer of 62, I traded in my papers for uniform in blue. I took Abe Lincoln's bounty and Union swore to save, but what I have seen since that day haunts me to my grave. We were farmers, merchants, clockmakers, and I knew all their names. Some escaping trouble, still others seeking fame. Proud we marched down Main Street while Bristol rang her bells. But none would know our destiny to glory or to hell. Oh, I can't escape the dreams. Don't you hear their screams? Oh, and I will kill no more. Oh, 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 let them fight their civil war. Put on a train to Maryland with but a single drill to Antietam's killing fields. Upon that cornstalk hill, we faced their fiercest legion in a withering hail of lead. And terror ran while rebel yells echoed in our head. We dug graves for many days, watched by lifeless eyes, then marched with rifles at our back. The just had fought at our side. Little Mac called it victory, but for failure we were blamed. And if I might survive this war, I vow to clear my name. Oh, I can't escape the dreams. Oh, don't you hear their screams? Surrounded the siege at Plymouth Town Till our white rag of surrender Stopped shells raining down To Andersonville through gates of hell Its deadline we had crossed When they paroled my skin and bones My soul had long been lost I am artist Culver My breath is fading fast Tell my wife and children I love them to the last The curse I leave this world with Before the fighting's done Is those that vote to start the wars Be those that face the guns came written in my old man's hand 
New recruit at basic couldn't understand Why the vet back home never spoke of what he saw He'd always held it in and explode and withdraw This bridge is crumbling No troubled waters are pulling me in Hold the line by a little more time And take my hand, you've had my back Now it's my turn to fix these cracks In this bridge that we're walking over My baby girl's face like a candle in the black In my mind somehow I gotta find my way back That I won't forget And a thousand things haven't stopped me yet For this bridge ain't crumbling No troubled waters are pulling me in Hold the line by a little more time And take my hand, you've had my back now it's my turn to fix these cracks in this bridge that we're walking over. Hold the locket that helped get me here. Funny how something broken could fight back the fear We gather round the table this Thanksgiving day I see my dad and my daughter face to face But this bridge ain't crumbling No troubled waters are pulling me in Hold the line by a little more time Take my hand, you've had my back Now it's my turn to fix these cracks In this bridge that we're walking over On this bridge that we built to walk over Walking over Thank you so very much. So I'm going to leave you today with an answer to the question, why? Why is the question that I hear most frequently after shows about why did you get so interested in family history? Part of it I blame on my grandmother for giving us the gateway drug to Ancestry.com. If you have, you know, like colonial or revolutionary war heritage, everybody else who has that heritage has already been on Ancestry, so it pretty much you just follow shaky leaf hints into the past until you fall asleep in front of your computer. But I got to thinking about it one day, and it's like, you know, if you look at that family tree, whatever you know of it and all the blank spots that you don't, somebody fulfilled that role. And every one of those people in that tree is essential to each of us being here. If you think about it, if you were to go back in time, like the time that our 10 times great-grandparents lived, like 450, 500 years ago, we all have 4,096 10-time great-grandparent spots in our family tree. Now, some of those folks might have doubled up and done double duty, and that's okay too. But in theory, 4,096 people. And every one of them is responsible for you being here. Now, let me put that to you another way. If I was to go back in time 500 years and tell you that those 4,096 people would pair up and procreate and 500 years later you'd be here, would you take the bet? Probably not. So the next time you're having a really crappy day, remind yourself 
You beat a bazillion to one odds to even be here. You're perfect. You're a miracle, magical and mysterious. And that's why I do this. Thank you. So I got to thinking one day, you know, I, I like to sort of remember some of these ancestors of mine that I've gotten to know over the last six years a little bit. And, and I thought, well, I should, you know, write a song about them. And being a singer-songwriter, no matter how much we think we're writing about somebody else at heart, it still is all about us in the end. I did my best to be reasonably altruistic about it, but anyway called Web of Mystery. By the way, the album is called Treasures in My Chest, and it'll be out later this year. If you want to talk to me at the table up there afterwards, that'd be great. But I hope you enjoy the rest of the Chautauqua just as much as I will. I've been trying to touch the past. I want to know just why I am. Reach back through the mist of time. So much I want to understand You were a child once like me Full of wonder, full of pain I know sometimes that you were scared I know that sometimes you were brave This is the only life I've known In part you gave it to me Look behind or look ahead You were woven in the thread In my web of mystery I'm still trying to touch the past While the present slips away but I've got to know how your part goes Before those pages fade to gray You were old once like me I wish that I could see your face No one else knows what's past our eyes Hurt and anger, love and grace you gave it to me look behind or look ahead you were woven in the thread in my web of mystery someday centuries from now like coaxing amber into flame since I've left a verse or two behind Someone might still speak my name Someone might still speak my name Someone might still speak my name
first I filled my own two hands with all On the way down here, I was trying to calculate how many years I have done the Chautauqua here at Montgomery College and uh, Montgomery Community College, and I think it's been at least 10, possibly 12 years. Um, I missed one year, but I'll talk about that in the next song. And I, I feel lucky because now when we scheduled this, I actually get to like sort of choose the person that I want to open for. And when I saw it was going to be a pirate queen, I was like, of course, that's the one that I want, is I want to see the pirate queen. And I honestly cannot think of a more appropriate backdrop, because what we need right now is like a whole load of pirate queens in front of this flag, showing you that pirate queens can rule things. <laughs> So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be her, her pirate, um, what would be, like, I'll be a, a pirate consort, queen consort, warming up for Grace O'Malley. I'm very excited for you guys to hear her story. But I wanted to do something that had to do with water, since she is a journeyer and an explorer of, of the limits and boundaries of water. And the reason we get so excited about explorers is because they ask us to test ourselves, what we would be willing to risk and do, and also what we'd be willing to risk and do for other people. And there's this fascinating character named Violet Jessup who was on a boat in April of 1912. And she did the thing that a lot of us would probably be afraid to do, which is to help other people into a lifeboat before she got in herself. She was on the Titanic when it sank. And she helped people get into the lifeboats and she saved countless lives as well as her own. And I know this because she got on another boat later that also sank and she survived. So my funny joke about Violet is that you either want to be near Violet on any trek because she knows where the exits are, or if you see that she has booked passage on your journey, take a later flight. <laughs> this is a song I wrote to celebrate the idea of um, taking care of others and the mystery of knowing the past. And I look at the Titanic and I think this is a great lesson for us. We hopefully learn from the things that we do. And it's a sea shanty, so you can imagine that you're on the water as I sing this. Steam burns on as the quartet plays a song, and we all go down in the ocean. Cold, clear night, we're full steam ahead. 
The year that I missed was 2013, and I missed it for a pretty good reason. I um, was in recuperation and recovery from a violent car wreck. I had been hit by a drunk driver while I was on tour in Texas in 2013. And so what I thought was going to be maybe a year-long recovery process of some broken bones and a little bit of a spiritual existential crisis has actually taken six years so far, and it's probably going to continue on for the rest of my life. And that's what I mean about being patient. Right? Do you guys remember this from 10 minutes ago? <laughs> I thought I was going to be well in like a year and that driving was going to be great. It took me two and a half years to drive a car again. I still do not do well on the highway. I was super happy that there was so much traffic because everyone is going 40 miles an hour. If you ever see a person smiling in traffic, it's probably because they've had a bad experience in a car and they're like, this is great. We should all drive at this very mellow speed. <laughs> so I like that. Um, but it takes a long time to get better. And so I encourage you, if you're struggling with anything, because life can involve lots of losses, just to give yourself patience and time and know that you are taking as much time as you need to heal. Nobody is making a deadline for you. Take as much time as you need. You don't have to get over anything. It's not about getting over something. It's about making it small enough to carry. So that brings me to my next topic. I did a theater piece about women that I toured for about three years, and if you've seen me before at Chautauqua, I've talked about that project, but I've started a new project of storytelling about recovery. Because what I discovered about recovery is that you can't, nobody else can recover you. I don't know if you guys already knew this, but you have to recover yourself. That's also what takes time. And so using the myth of Eurydice, I'm developing a new performance piece about recovery, and the next two songs that I'm going to play for you have to do with that. But I also thought the best thing to do with traumatic events, loss, grief, anything, is to make it small enough that it can fit in your pocket. So I'm a kid of the 90s, and I love zines, and I made a little zine 
that you can also make that tells the story of my recovery in five chapters. This is a work in progress. I've just started this work and it'll be finished next year, but if you're interested, please pick up a card at the merch table and keep in touch with me. Um, and I'd love to keep you in on the progress of, of that piece. One of the first songs I wrote for the project was about finding a little pinprick of light in a dark room. And if you have had depression or you know anyone with depression, it can feel like a crushing darkness. And sometimes all you need is a little spark so that you can see the door. Because you've been wandering around the whole room in the dark and you're like, where is this door? Where is the exit? But the second you see a flash of light, you're like, there it is. So I wrote a song about that to remind myself just to find that little spark when I'm feeling down. Just swear. 